My name's Dan Upton. I'm going to talk about the Studebaker family today. A little history on them. Actually, Peter Studebaker was the first guy to come over here. He's from Rothman, Holland. And he came over here in September of 1763. And he arrived in Philadelphia. He actually had five kids. Henry, Clint, or Clint, John, Peter, and Jacob. Henry and Clint were the first guys to kind of found the Studebaker company. And then later, John came along and he invested some money he made during the gold rush when he was making wheelbarrows out in California. And then Peter later kind of became the treasurer, vice president, and then Jacob just kind of tagged along for the ride. They first started making, oh, excuse me, first started making wagons. And when the Civil War broke out, they made hundreds of wagons for the North. And by 1867, they had about 6,000 vehicles, you know, wagons, just roaming around the United States. And then I thought it was pretty interesting. During the Spanish American, uh, Spanish American War, the government came to them and said, hey, we need 500 wagons in 36 hours. The Baker Company did it in 24. So I thought it was pretty interesting. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, they actually started, after they got, you know, was working with wagons, they're like, we need to reinvent, we need to do something a little more. So they started working with electric cars. In 1902, they started tinkering with them. They only sold 20 of them by 1912. They were just like, okay, this isn't working. So they went on to combustion it. In 1904, they started making the first combustion. And by 1913, they were the third biggest company you know, in the automotive industry. And by 1920, they stopped making wagons and cut all production with everything to South Bend, Indiana. They, they, oh, I have a hard time talking. The new, uh, six, they invented a new six-cylinder engine. It kind of boosted profits in 1901. They made, I think it was like a $10 million profit, roughly something along those lines. They kind of had basic names for vehicles, the big six, special six, light six, and standard six. So they came to them like, hey, we need to kind of reinvent our names. So in 1927, they came up with a president, commander, and dictator. Which, their goal was just to be one of the finest automotive cars, really nice vehicles. President came with a 100 horsepower straight in, straight eight. Commander came with like 12 different trim models. And then the Dictator, which later got dropped in 1937 because of Hitler. They thought it was kind of bad publicity at the time of the Dictator. But that came with a standard six also. Then in 1933, they filed for bankruptcy. The president at the time, he actually stepped down and committed suicide. He actually shot himself in the heart. And the reason, the big reason they did so bad is their failure to cut production and cost quickly. But during the 50s, kind of reamped everything. They invented the weasel, this little goofy thing. It's actually pretty interesting, a little amphibious automotive vehicle. And then they also in 47, the coming and going car. They actually got made fun of for those. People really liked it, but at the same time, they couldn't tell which end was the front end. So it's kind of, you can't really tell anymore. Same thing, you can't. And then they came out with the Gold Hawk, which is a supercharged little monster, in my opinion. I thought it was pretty impressive, about 125 miles per hour back in the 50s. And then as the 60s rolled around, you know, Parker Motor Company bought Studebaker. They formed Parker Corporation, Studebaker Corporation. And during the four years they were together, they had no profit. So they dropped all the models, bought the Silverhawk, and they tried thinking, what are we going to do? And that's when they came up with the Lark Project. Their goal was to save the company. They had a new idea for a compact car by reducing the front end and overhangs and shorten the wheelbase ahead of the firewall. But at the same time, they're like, we need to make sure this car's big. So they, you know, allowed six times your car, and this was a huge profit. You're doing really well, you're like, okay, let's keep going, let's just keep rolling. So they reinvented the large project, kind of reamped it, and they made the Wagoneer. This very unique looking style vehicle. It had the sliding roof on the top, I thought that was pretty inventive. In the Avante in 63, this had a built-in roll bar, cushioned seats, and it was one of the vehicles they really focused on safety. But even with all these great inventions in like technology, by 63 they shut down the plants, and by 66 they were completely out of business. So I mean, I just thought it was really interesting that a company that was around for over 100 years just failed. And that was my presentation at Stuberry.